Hello, everyone. My name is Lito Ferra, the host of Crib Wolf Talks. Before I introduce our guest for today's program, I want to say a few words about Crib Wolf Talks. This program is not a one-man show. There's a team of very bright, dedicated individuals behind these monthly programs. They volunteer many hours of time on research, studio, setup, pre-production, and post-production work. I truly could not sit in this chair and present quality podcasts and webcasts without this great team. Crib of Talks is an independent community-based podcast and webcast. We will continue to present episodes focused on a number of topics related to individuals with varied abilities. The lack of affordable housing, especially community-based housing for individuals with varied abilities, remains a great concern to many Canadians. In addition to a roof over your head, we are all entitled to live a fulfilling life. But what does this mean to many of us? We have presented episodes dealing with this very question. I do believe it incorporates so many things. Understanding mental illness, less isolation, more inclusivity, community engagement, and mutually beneficial employment for everyone. Speaking of employment, I have two exceptional individuals with me today. From NPAR Canada, Mr. Andrew Subrian, Manager of Outreach and Engagement, and Ms. Sharon Minos, Account Manager, Community Engagement for GTA and the Province of Ontario. Andrew and Sharon, welcome to our program, Crib of Talks. Andrew, let me begin with you. I think a good start would be for everyone to know a little bit about your organization, NPower Canada. Excellent. Thanks so much, Lino. I'm really happy to be here. Um, NPower Canada has been in, in, in operation since 2014, north of the border. Uh, we started in 2001 in the U.S. and have grown across four provinces in Canada now. We're operating in B.C., Alberta, Ontario, and Nova Scotia with our eyes set on um, some more growth in the coming years and months. Uh, our mission is simple. You know, we see a lot of youth who are either stuck in survival jobs or not able to find work. And our goal is to help create employment pathways for them through our tech training programs. Excellent. A very impressive organization, especially what I saw on the website, a no-cost opportunity for digital and professional skills training. So, Andrew, you mentioned NPAR Canada is present in four Canadian provinces, British Columbia, Alberta, Ontario, and Nova Scotia. You also hinted at further expansion across Canada. Can you tell us a bit more about your expansion plans? I'm so glad you asked. You know, actually, I came out of a meeting earlier today, and we will be launching in Montreal coming this September. So our classes are three times a year in January, May, and September, and we're really excited to enter La Belle Provence by the end of this year and support some more Canadians in, in that part of the country. Nice plug for the province of Quebec. Well done. It is great <laughs> to hear that NPAR Canada intends to expand across Canada. Sharon, your website indicates that NPAR Canada targets individuals between the ages of 17 and 30. What is the reasoning behind this age group? Yeah, thank you so much for this question, Lino. So we at NPower Canada have identified that there are many talented and passionate young people who unfortunately lack the proper skills and access to the right tools, which are necessary in order to launch successful careers. So this limits their ability to participate in the future workforce and build a secure and sustainable financial future. There are actually over 860,000 youth and young adults across Canada who are not employed, studying, or participating in some form of training. And this information can also be found on our website. And our incredible funding sponsors have equally recognized this shortfall in the job market. And as a result, they have committed to supporting these young individuals by providing them with that ability to join NPower Canada's programs at no cost so that they can have these equal opportunities to advance their careers. Well, Sharon, 860,000 young adults unemployed across Canada. This represents roughly, what, 2% of the Canadian population. That's significant. Sharon, could you walk us through the selection process to these unique digital training programs? This is a great question and also one that we are always so happy to answer in order to help individuals take that first step in applying. So through the support of our great sponsors, our programs and services are all free with no hidden cost, which is something we are very proud to share. 
Our goal is really to ensure that community members are aware of the wonderful benefits they can receive by taking advantage of Empower Canada services. As so, our skills trainings consist of numerous different in-demand certification programs that applicants can choose from. Some of them are actually for beginners, which means that you do not need to have any prior IT knowledge whatsoever. We really do aim to target as large of an audience as possible, regardless of whether they have a background in IT. The great thing about our programs as well is that each one of the trainings is only 15 weeks. So in those 15 weeks, students participate in a hands-on learning approach and engage through interactive live lectures with trained instructors. In just under four months, these young individuals obtain industry-recognized certifications, along with so many other important professional and life skills, which will really lead them to that sustainable professional career in the long run. We also try to make the application process as simple as possible for those who are interested, and so it consists of three simple steps. The first step is an online application form, followed by an IT skills evaluation. This evaluation is just a way for us to really determine if the applicant has any previous IT knowledge or none at all. And then the final step of this application process includes a video interview with one of our team members from the admissions department. This is also really a great way for us to get to know the applicant better, um, find out what their goals are, and really determine how we can help support them in achieving those aspirations. For 2022, our goal is to support more than 2,500 new participants in entering our programs. And our team is really always looking forward to receiving new applications from these young and passionate individuals who are as excited about jumpstarting their career as we are at Empower Canada. Incredible program. To think that an individual can go through the Empower Canada program in under four months and graduate with entry-level digital skills. And you also mentioned 2,500 new participants in 2022. Clearly, you're forecasting this large increase due to a huge demand in the Canadian workplace. Andrew, we live in a world that is experiencing significant challenges associated with the employment of individuals with varied abilities. Is this an area that NPAR Canada intends to incorporate in their outreach programming? Definitely. Thanks a lot for leading across that question. Um, equity, diversity, inclusion is an area of you know, a lot of uh, attention over the past few years, and especially in the last year during COVID. Um, we aim to have a learning environment that best represents what we see in the workplace. So as our applicants come to us, we have a one-on-one -on -one approach in the application process. And based on what they self-disclose to us, whether it's rage, race, age, um, background, educational experience, you know, gender orientation or what have you, we actually set up our class cohorts so there's an equal balance and a mix and the experience that someone has in that classroom mirrors what they'll have in the real workplace. So giving exposure to different um, individuals in the classroom really helped to increase learning outside of the technical training that we offer in the program. So we, we really, you know, Sharon mentioned that goal of 2,500 new participants for 2022. Um, it's a big number, as you mentioned, but the most important thing to know is that we value each applicant on a one-to-one -one basis, and we really want to hear their story and help them move forward in their lives. So it's so important for us to connect with them on that individual one-to-one uh, -one basis. This is all good. Diversity, inclusion, and how many young people view individuals with varied abilities is a pathway to improving the workforce culture. I believe the application process needs to be adjusted to suit the skill set of a person with varied abilities. The personalization of NPAR Canada application process is exceptional. Sharon, I read on the 2020 NPAR Canada Impact Report, NPAR Canada has graduated over 2,000 students since 2014, all underprivileged and underserved, which is fantastic, by the way. Are you able to tell us if any of these graduating students have varied abilities? Yes, thank you so much for touching on that, Lino. Our progress and ability to help a growing number of community members is something that we are extremely proud of. We have really expanded throughout the years and have a growing list of over 2,200 program graduates. 
As Andrew was also highlighting, we are committed to equity, diversity, and inclusion, and actually 13% of our students self-identify as having unique abilities. Student success is something that's really important to us, and so we also offer alumni support for up to five years post-graduation. This also includes some additional alumni certification trainings, which are available at no cost. And these are overall just fantastic opportunities to advance those professional development skills, which are essential in the workforce. Sharon, this is all great information. Can either of you elaborate further on what percentage within the 30% of the individuals with unique abilities have graduated from an Empower IT program with a new skill set? Yeah, I can I can jump in um, with that as well, you know, having a little bit more experience um, with the applicants as they move through the process. So what's interesting to note, and we are really working hard to create an environment where applicants can really be open and honest in sharing with us their needs that they have. So what we've found is, um, you know, during that initial stages when they reach out to us, even when they apply, finalize their application, begin our orientation boot camp week, many are reluctant to actually disclose that they do have a disability or a varied ability need. Um, it may have been because of previous experience, whether they've been applying for a job or even applying to school in, in different areas and just kind of being shut out of those opportunities. Um, we value that and encourage everyone to share as much as possible. What we've found is that once the individuals start the program, while they're taking the coursework and going through projects and assignments, um, it is in those moments that they actually disclose and are, are really, you know, we've earned their trust and respect and right. see that we're committed to working with them. So in those moments, they actually disclose that they do have, um, you know, a need. And at that point, we, we once again connect with them one-on-one -on -one to really ensure that they're supported. Once you join our program, you know, you're part of our family. We want to help you all the way through until you get that first paycheck and beyond. So um, that's been our experience thus far. That's great information, Andrew. And I, I love hearing about the family part. So Andrew, I have a two-part question. What do you see as the current challenges faced by NPAR Canada? And what is your organization doing to overcome them? Awesome. That's my favorite question. And I love, I love that you asked that, Lena. <laughs> That's great. I love hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> so my uh, having joined the organization about a year ago, the biggest challenge that I've seen and shared with my colleagues that have been here for longer is just honestly getting the word out. I've attended a few graduations and even connected with participants when they are started the program or midway through the program. And one of the things that is always common to them that they, they, they relate to me is they say, Andrew, I wish I knew about this program a year ago, a month ago, five years ago because I can see a future for myself. Um, and although those moments bring me joy that we've you know, been able to find this opportunity and work with them, it does bring me sadness and also motivation to really be hard in connecting and spreading the word and showing what's out there, You know, especially seeing it's a no cost opportunity, it's virtually offered and you can be done in a little over the 90 days. Um, one of the ways that we're working hard to overcome that is, is exactly our time with you today. You know, you know, connecting with organizations like yourself and just being here to share the good word on, on this podcast and, and this video have been a wonderful experience and helping us, um, you know, have have a touch and have a chance to connect with those who you've earned trust in, in sharing their stories. Right. And and once again, just thanks for having us on board to to present this opportunity and create employment opportunities for those who may have not even thought about getting into tech and what the future may hold for them. Andrew, I'm really pleased to see your interest in partnering with nonprofit organizations, servicing adults with varied abilities, such as Cribble Foundation. A great way to access perhaps the segment of the underserved and underprivileged population may be to consider an access point to these digital training programs existing in multi residential communities where individuals with varied abilities are looking for personal growth and new skills. Would this be something that NPAR might consider? Yeah, excellent. We're um... You know, I mentioned we're growing provinces and in our exploration and connecting with partners like yourself, um, I feel like I'm in school because I'm learning of new opportunities and different programs that are out there. So the company, you know, our mandate is to really be innovative in our approach and, you know, not just, a, you know, presenting our, the opportunities through our traditional, you know, promotional or recruitment activities that you would see a typical college or university or high school. But, you know, what can we do to meet people where they are? Um, love learning on new ideas on how to connect and how we can 
um, join forces with those organizations like yourself that are just helping provide and being a springboard for those that are trying to elevate themselves. So yeah, definitely would be, I'd, I'd love to share some ideas with you. Thank you, Andrew. We'd like to work with you as well. I think people see NPAR Canada as a beacon of hope and on the frontier of providing new opportunities for young adults that are underserved and underprivileged, especially those individuals with varied abilities. Sponsor funders are investing large dollars in new and complex technology. IT technology is getting more and more complicated. Clearly, the NPOWERS program is grooming the next generation of IT specialists to support the increase in demand for IT technicians. Thank you, Andrew and Sharon, for being on our program. We applaud the inclusive approach to digital training, and we wish NPAR Canada continued success. And we look forward to following up with NPAR Canada. Thank you so much for having us, Lino. Thanks so much, Lino. Thank you both. As I near the end of our show, a couple of comments. NPAR Canada's no-cost digital training program is a great opportunity at your fingertips. So join us next month for a conversation with Susan Bissayon, CEO of Safe Haven a wonderful organization, and in April with Jim Carrick, VP and honorary founder of Reynolds for Heroes, another great organization. And if you missed any of our previous podcasts or webcasts, visit www.cribwolftalks.com and on social media platforms. Should you wish to share your story or be part of a future podcast or webcast, please send us an email to info at cribwolftalks.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Crib Wolf Talks. I am Lino Farah, and remember, those who cannot help themselves need our help. <laughs>